Talk the show with the top story this evening in what could come as a huge boost to the Bharatiya Janata Party ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Network 18 learns that the cabinet has approved a reservation of up to 10% for economically backward upper caste in government jobs. Lakshman Roy, who broke that story, is here with the details. Lakshman, is the Arakshan Mamle Par Aapko, what, what do you expect of this at this point in time? सरकार ने चुनाव से पहले एक मास्टर स्ट्रोक खेला है और मास्टर स्ट्रोक ये है कि आर्थिक रूप से पिछड़े हुए जो सवर्ण हैं उनको 10 परसेंट का हम आरक्षण देंगे ये 10 परसेंट का आरक्षण हम सरकारी नौकरी में देंगे सरकार ने ऐसा फैसला लिया है कैबिनेट की बैठक एक बजे से शुरू हुई थी और कुछ देर पहले खत्म हुई है उसी में फैसला लिया गया है और जो दस का आरक्षण मिलेगा वो आर्थिक रूप से पिछड़े हुए जो सवर्ण हैं उनको मिलेगा आर्थिक रूप से पिछड़े हुए का मतलब ये होगा कि जिनकी सालाना आमदनी आठ लाख रुपये या उससे कम है उन को ये आरक्षण दिया जाएगा यानी जो आर सवर्ण है जिनकी सालाना आमदनी आठ लाख रुपए या उनसे कम है उनको सरकारी नौकरी में आरक्षण मिलेगा आरक्षण दस परसेंट का मिलेगा और इससे बड़ी बात बड़ी बात यह है कि ये दस परसेंट का आरक्षण पचास परसेंट की सीमा से ऊपर होगा पचास परसेंट की सीमा का मतलब सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने एक फैसला लिया था जिसमें कहा था कि आप पचास से ज़्यादा आरक्षण किसी भी सूरत में नहीं दे सकते हैं इसलिए आपने देखा होगा एस हो एस हो ओ हो सभी को पचास के अंदर ही आरक्षण दिया जाता है लेकिन ये जो सवर्ण का आरक्षण है वो पचास से ऊपर होगा यानी अब 60 परसेंट कुल आरक्षण होगा क्योंकि सुप्रीम कोर्ट का फैसला है इस वजह से इसके लिए सरकार संविधान संशोधन लाने जा रही है और संविधान संशोधन कल हो सकता है संसद के इसी सत्र में जो कि आखिरी दिन है उस समय सरकार पेश करे और ये इस वजह से इसके दो फायदे हैं एक तो सवर्णों को सरकार लुभाना चाह रही है हम दस आरक्षण दे करके पिछड़े का हिस्सा नहीं काट रहे यह भी सरकार ये बताना चाह रही है तो एक बहुत बड़ी खबर बहुत बड़ा फैसला और बहुत ही चुपके चुपके फैसला लिया गया अचानक से आज कैबिनेट की बैठक बुलाई गई किसी को एजेंडा तक नहीं बताया गया और फिर यह बड़ा फैसला जब प्रधानमंत्री नहीं हुए थे तब नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने कहा था कि देश का विकास छप्पन इंच के सीने वाला ही कर सकता है और उस छप्पन इंच के सीने वाले ने इस देश के विकास कर को ब, करके बता दिया कि अपना हित मत सोचो सबका साथ और सबका विकास सोचो उसी आधार पर सबके विकास के दृष्टि से आज इस सामान्य वर्ग के निर्णय को भी लेने का काम किया आर्थिक स्थिति सुधारने के लिए आरक्षण नहीं है आर्थिक स्थिति से अगर उसको ठीक करना था तो नरेंद्र मोदी जी को बोलते ना भाई पंद्रह पंद्रह लाख रुपए हर एक के खाते में डाल दीजिए हर देश के हर लोगों को मिल जाता और दो करोड़ नौजवानों को रोजगार दे देते और जहाँ तक पचासी फीसदी जो लोग हैं उनको मात्र जो है आप देखिएगा कि कितना कम आरक्षण है बल्कि बढ़ना उनका चाहिए था और जिस प्रकार से जो पचास परसेंट जो है वो उसका लाभ कौन उठा रहा है नहीं जितनी भी प्रशंसा प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी की की जाए वो कम है स्वर्ण समाज के लोगों की उन्होंने चिंता की है उसमें जो गरीब लोग हैं उनके लिए आरक्षण की व्यवस्था की है इससे बहुत बड़ा संदेश देश में गया है और प्रधानमंत्री जी ने साबित किया है कि वो सबका साथ सबके विकास के रास्ते पर चलकर सबकी चिंता उन्होंने किया है और वो कर रहे हैं आप आने तो दीजिए जरा सा देख तो ले क्या आ रहा है क्या नहीं आ रहा तभी तो उसको जवाब दे भाई आप भी जानते हैं कि संभव नहीं है ये तो आपको मालूम है कि पचास सुप्रीम कोर्ट का जजमेंट है कि पचास परसेंट के बियॉन्ड नहीं आ सकते हैं तो इसलिए जरा उनका देख तो लें कि कहां से किस तरह का संशोधन ला रहा है एक लंबे समय से हम लोग ये मांग करते रहे एक लंबे समय से हम लोग चाहते हैं कि जो स्वर्ण जाति के जो गरीब लोग हैं उनको ये आरक्षण का भी उनको लाभ मिले मुझे खुशी है कि हमारी आज की सरकार ने कम से कम ये फैसला लिया अब मुझे नहीं लगता कि इस पर कोई राजनीति होनी चाहिए कम से कम इस फैसले की इसकी शुरुआत हुई है और जो गरीब वर्ग के जो लोग हैं जो भले स्वर्ण जाति से आते हों अग्री जाति से आते हों उस वर्ग से आते हों कम से कम उनको भी उनका हक आज मिला है सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेड रिजर्वेशन शुड नॉट गो बियॉन्ड फिफ्टी परसेंट दैट ऑर्डर नीड्स टू बी करेक्टेड एंड द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट हैज नेवर थॉट ऑफ चैलेंजिंग दैट ऑर्डर दिस गवर्नमेंट एट द फैग एंड ऑफ इस टेन्यूर ट्राइंग टू डू वट एवर इट वॉन्ट्स टू डू टू प्रोमोट इट्स ओन एजेंडा हिंदुत्व एजेंडा बनाने की बात जानते हैं पचास परसेंट ज्यादा आरक्षण होने संविधान के संशोधन करेंगे संविधान में संशोधन करेंगे कैसे हो जाएगा संविधान में संशोधन कहा जा रहा है कल ही आएगा राज्यसभा और लोकसभा चलिए आने दो यार कुछ अभी है सोचे तो कर नहीं पा रहे लेकिन सर रिजर्वेशन को देखकर आपको लगता है कि समाज को बांटने की कोशिश है अभी नहीं जब आएगा सामने तब मैं कहूँगा
अगर आप 10 प्रतिशत आर्थिक पिछड़े हुए सवर्णों को आरक्षण देना चाहते हैं तो उसके लिए सबसे पहली जरूरत है कि आप संविधान में संशोधन कीजिए और तब इस बिल को लेकर आइए अगर सरकार की मंशा वास्तव में सवर्ण जातियों के आर्थिक रूप से पिछड़े हुए लोगों को आरक्षण देने की है उनको न्याय देने की है तो विशेष सत्र बुलाए सरकार हम सरकार का साथ देंगे और फिर सभी पार्टियों का समर्थन जुटाकर इस बिल को पास कराया जाए बड़ी देर कर दी मेहरबान आते आते हैं? और ये भी चुनाव के वक्त में जिसका कोई लॉजिस्टिक समझ में आता नहीं है आप देखो कितना ही सुशासन कर लें कितने ही जुमले गढ़ लें अब मोदी जी को कोई भी आसन जो है पदच्युत होने से नहीं बचा सकता है ये जो फैसला लिया गया है मुझे लगता है अगड़े और पिछड़े करने की एक नई राजनीति की अब शुरुआत होगी अगर ऐसा ही चलता रहा और 10 प्रतिशत आरक्षण देने की जो बात हुई है उस पर तो पहले संविधान में संशोधन करने की भी बात हुई है और उस पर अगर लागू होता है अगर आरक्षण दस प्रतिशत तो मैं नहीं मानता कि कोई गलत है जो भी सवर्ण जातियां है जो गरीब लोग है उनको उनको लाभ मिलना चाहिए लेकिन आर्थिक आधार पर मुझे नहीं लगता कि संविधानिक कोई दर्जा इसको मिल पाएगा ये एस टी और ओबीसी के सामने एक सवर्णों का एक मोर्चा तैयार करने का एक राजनीतिक साजिश है Okay shifting focus to market action then the Lal Street started the week on a strong footing led by positive global cues the Nifty saw a gap up opening but retreated from highs in the last hour to end below the 10800 mark Sensex ended with gains of about half a percent amongst the broader markets banks rallied about 100 points while mid caps bucked the trend to end flat with a positive bias we are sure you are joining in with the wrap of today's trading action sir be bulls kick started the week on a fairly strong footing a very range bound start to the week with some bias on the downside towards the close we'll have to sort of take that on board the nifty did close down almost 60 points from the peak of the day and there was very clear underperformance in the mid cap and the small cap arena you can't write can't write that off let me actually start with the large cap action and talk about some of the key movers on the way up first of all uh, bharti infratel continued its good work from last week it was actually in pole position on the nifty uh, some of the banks like axis bank did manage gains uh, they were in positive territory towards the end of well maruti is trying to come back from the lows the recent lows that it's seen so that was a stock on the upside as well titan on their positive outlook for the third quarter uh, largely in green throughout the day as well and infosys and tcs were other key pillars that were batting for the bulls today so what was the problem area or what did not work if i talk about the downside uh, watch out for the selling pressure on a couple of these uh, nbfcs from the housing finance side in the bulls housing finance was really apparent stock was down almost 4% as we were closing out and the weakness on Bajaj Auto and specifically Aisha Motors is still very very telling after about a 13 14% slide last week Aisha was down over 1% once again today uh, and there was some pressure on Yes Bank as well coming to the mid cap action now here is where it's interesting because some of the large mid cap stocks they almost qualified to be in the large cap arena they continue to get downgraded by the market day after day page industries again 3 3.5% on the lower side today ashok leyland making new 52 week lows down almost 3.5% uh bandhan bank and groove finance obviously are news based stocks and the market seems to be sort of having doubts about the kind of swap ratio that's being discussed at the moment both those stocks were down between 4 and 5% and dhfl as i mentioned housing finance was not a great area to be in the market today so that stock was also down 4 on the gaining side dish tv is the stock that really stands out up 10% so far in 2019 5% today itself uh, really buzzing nbcc beml these were some of the other good names uh, and there's a lot of excitement in the real estate part of the market because the market seems to be hoping or expecting some kind of a gst tweak so that kept stocks like colte patel sobha dlf you name it peninsula land the entire pack buzzing quiet start uh, a very careful start to the week let's see how the rest of the sessions go Okay, a range bound Monday indeed. Uh, thanks, Rabi, for taking us through that. Now, from equities to currency, the rupee eased to a six-month high today amid a firm domestic equity markets and a weakening of the US dollar. So, the Indian currency opened higher at 69.42 against the dollar versus Friday's close of 69.72. It then touched 69.24 in late trade. 
but there, then erased all the gains and is now hovering around the 69.7 mark against the greenback. Now, the Reserve Bank would not like a situation where liquidity becomes a lose money. That's the word coming in from RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das speaking to reporters after concluding his meeting with MSMEs. The governor said that the central bank will intervene if there is a liquidity shortage in the banking system. But he also said that the RBI believes that liquidity needs of the economy are largely met at this point. Listen in. While dealing with the issue of liquidity, I would also like to say that this is something which we are, the Reserve Bank is constantly monitoring and uh, will take steps whenever there is a need to deal with the liquidity deficit if, if it is noticed. At the same time, I must also add that uh, the Reserve Bank would not like a situation where liquidity becomes a kind of a lose money. Any infusion of liquidity will have to be very carefully considered and has to be need-based. So therefore, the caution and care has to be exercised by the Reserve Bank of India so that excess liquidity, which sometimes has certain uh, adverse uh, consequences, that is not created. Okay, let's put his comments into perspective. Lata Venkatesh is here with her analysis of the RBI's governor's stance on the liquidity issue. Lata, what do you make of what Shakti Kanta Das had to comment on liquidity specifically? Well, it did look like he sounded a bit cautious that he doesn't want liquidity to get into surplus mode. The current position of the Reserve Bank is that uh, it has to be, uh, uh, liquidity has to be neutral. And, uh, you know, it's at the moment mildly surplus, depending on how you calculate uh, uh, core liquidity. Uh, from what the governor has said, the market has not taken any change. It believes that the status quo continues. Uh, they don't believe that because the governor has said today that they are not in favor of lose money, that any of the OMOs are going to be trimmed. In any case, the OMOs for... Uh, February and March are only a promise. Uh, the uh, January is going to be 50,000 crore, but uh, uh, February and March were already caveated as if, uh, you know, depending on currency conditions. I mean, the Reserve Bank has had to buy a whole lot of dollars. It need not do any OMO. But the perception of the market about how RBI will approach liquidity has not changed because of what the governor has said today. He only seemed to be reiterating uh, the RBI's position. So if anybody thought he will be too pliant because he is from the IAS, that doubt is removed. But uh, uh, I don't think the market at the moment was working with that as the base case. The other key takeaways on MSME and NBFC, if anyone thought that he was in, 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 uh, in favor of being a little more pliant to the government point of view and giving a line of credit, there was no such mention. He merely said he is meeting them. On the issue of PCA, again, all he said is that governance reforms are needed. They should not be restrictive. That did not give away anything as if there is going to be a removal of PCA restrictions round the corner. So basically, the governor left us where we were. Uh, he didn't seriously change our opinion about anything. And again, on dividend, he said, wait for the announcement. So uh, in terms of market movements, you could say that when slept the market unruffled. Okay, fair enough. Thanks, Lata, for wrapping that up for us. Uh, staying with the comment from the RBI governor, the RBI governor did not confirm if he has received any communication from the government with regards to transfer of dividend. However, he did clarify that the centre has not set any dividend target for the RBI. Meanwhile, a Reuters report suggests that central bank is likely to transfer an interim dividend of about 30 to 40,000 crore rupees by the end of March. The dividend could possibly help the government bridge a widening budget deficit following a drop in tax collections and would come ahead of the general elections, of course, due by May. When questioned if the RBI will be transferring any money to the government, Governor Shakti Kanta Das said that no decision has been taken yet on that matter. Moving on, the government is yet to take a decision on the much-anticipated relief package for the farm sector. We learned that the government is evaluating about four to five options, including a direct benefit transfer scheme and tweaking the Kisan credit card scheme. Parikshit Lutra is here with the details. Parikshit, what are you picking up on uh, the fine print of this? 
Well, we had been hearing for the last few days that the government is seriously considering uh, a direct benefit transfer of 4,000 rupees per acre per farmer in the country. This is on the lines of the uh, Terangana's Raitu Bandhu scheme. But uh, it seems that there are concerns in government circles about the total cost involved. The total cost of uh, implementation and execution of this project could be about uh, 3 lakh crore rupees. So what we're now hearing from the government that this is only one of the four to five measures which are being considered right now. No concrete steps uh, towards decision-making have been uh, taken at this stage. What we're learning is that the most likely way out for the moment is making changes to the Kisan credit card loan scheme under which uh, there could be changes such as converting this into a rupee come uh, debit card, uh, also increasing the collateral free loan up to 2 lakh rupees and also extending this uh, coverage to more farmers across the country. Currently, the KCC scheme only covers up to 50% uh, farmers in the country. They plan to extend the coverage in the days to come. And right now, there is a detailed study of the Kisan credit card loan scheme uh, taking place. Apart from that, there could be changes in the Fasal Bima Yojana and other schemes that the Modi government launched, launched in the last uh, four years. But we believe that uh, a comprehensive package is being worked out right now. With some exclusive information regarding the next GST Council meeting, Timzi, what are you picking up with respect to the agenda and what is likely to be announced on, in that meeting? Well, as you rightly mentioned, the GST Council is going to meet for the 32nd time on 10th of January. And this time on the agenda are key, key aspects which were discussed last time but could not be taken up. Firstly, giving a relief to the MSME sector, giving a relief to real estate sector. Both of these are the two crucial parts. When it comes to real estate, government is going to consider a proposal for boosting real estate sector under the GST regime by providing a composition scheme for residential construction limit units, construction units. Now, these will be cutting down GST rates from current 12% to 5% without input tax credit when it comes to under construction flats, under construction real estate. So that is going to be a big boost. When it comes to MSME government is considering that to raise the threshold of GST registration from current 20 lakhs to 75 lakhs. Also, a key item which was being discussed for rate rationalization, that is cement, as we know, Finance Minister did say that there is time for big ticket, more big ticket items to remain in the bracket where they are. So cement is not on agenda for rate rationalization. But yes, two major reliefs, that is real estate, MSME, and yes, not to forget, a composition scheme overall for service sector is also likely to come up where we, where we are hearing that the GOM has proposed that up to 50 lakhs a composition tax of 5% is what will be given to service, sec to service sector. Let's see finally what happens on 10th of uh, Jan. We'll keep you posted. Okay, we'll have you back on 10th for the exact details. Thanks, Timzi, for that. Now, we told you first on the 21st of December last year, and it is now official, Bantan Bank is also to acquire Groove Finance in a share swap deal. We understand that for every five shares of Groove Finance, shareholders will get three shares of Bandhan Bank. The shares were buzzing in trade today and succumbed to profit booking. Nisha Pudar, who broke that story earlier, is here with the fine print. Nisha, it seems to be a done deal now. What's the fine print looking like? So, sources uh, with direct knowledge have shared with us that it is at a fairly advanced stage. In fact, that announcement could be likely very soon is what we are gathering from sources. We had earlier uh, suggested that this transaction is, it, uh, is at an advanced stage and those talks have been going on where Bandhan Bank is likely to acquire Groove Finance for, uh, by way of a merger. Now, two things to look at over here. First, of course, uh, the swap ratio. So the reports do indicate that 3 is to 5 is the merger ratio and uh, which is closer to the SEBI guidelines in terms of uh, the swap ratio for a merger like this at the current market price. And the, uh, the price of Bandhan Bank and the stock price has also been under pressure because a lot of investors and analysts do feel that probably they are acquiring Groove Finance at an expensive valuation. Now, another important aspect to look at uh, and uh, the reason why Bandhan Bank is really going ahead with this acquisition is because they have to comply with the RBI norms or promote a shareholding currently from 82% they will come down to about 60% by way of this merger. They still have to reach the 40% mark. On the other hand, HDFC Limited, which owns 58% stake in... Um 
Groove Finance will land up owning close to about 15.5% post the merger and will require special RBI permission and may also have to spare or divest a part of their stake in the merged entity. So announcement very soon is what we are gathering. The rail transportation system is set for a sea change as Train 18, India's fastest train, is ready to hit the tracks. Built at a cost of 100 crore rupees, the train runs at a speed of 180 kilometers per hour. It also is the country's first engine-less train. So how different is the experience of travelling in this new train? An anu Sharma brings us this special report. If you're planning to travel from Delhi to Varanasi this month, there is a chance that you might be able to book yourself a ticket on the country's fastest train, the Train 18. The train gets its name from 2018, the year in which it was supposed to be launched. The inception of the train took place in April 2017 and after a period of one and a half years, the train's assembly took place at the Integral Coach Factory in Chennai. The train has undergone several speed tests and trials. It has crossed its maximum operational speed of 160 km per hour when it crossed the speed of 180 km per hour. The train gets its components from around uh, 100 local companies and a handful of global ones. In the local companies, you can see this Hyderabad based company, which is the Medha Servo Drives Private Limited, which has manufactured all the electrical components for the train. Uh, there are a handful of uh, global companies uh, which have manufactured this uh, the aircraft like uh, seating system uh, the braking system the seats have come from Spain and China the braking system has come from Germany the train also boasts of providing an aircraft flight experience to travelers with comfortable seating diffused lighting audio visual passenger information system automatic doors in fact a passenger may also speak to the driver directly in case of an emergency with total seating capacity of 1128 passengers, the self-propelled train set has been built at a cost of around 95 to 97 crore and two more of such sets are expected in the current fiscal. The train is set to get inaugurated for commercial service by the Prime Minister around the time of Kumbh Mela. While the train was earlier expected to run between Delhi and Bhopal, where it could have utilized its maximum speed of 160 km per hour, the train will now connect the Prime Minister's constituency Varanasi to Delhi in a matter of 8 hours. Now this track Delhi to Varanasi will no not allow the train to reach its maximum speed of 160 km per hour due to the restrictions of the track. It will now be able to run at 130 km per hour. Now while we have these semi-high speed trains in the country, it really remains to be seen how soon can the infrastructure be upgraded to the extent that these kind of trains can really work to their full potential. Back to you. All with that, it's time to wrap up this edition of After the Bell. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 Markets today.